What's going on, everybody? You know who it is. This is Austin, and this is the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about real estate and we talk about lifestyle. Today's guest is another heavy hitter coming out of Chicago, and we talk about a lot of interesting things. We talk about flipping in hills, which is her uh, philanthropic organization. Uh, that she has built from the ground up that helps people, uh, especially women, um, learn how to invest. We talk about that. We talk about developing the mindset, uh, the killer mindset that you need to take your business to the next level to continue to uh, grow as a person. And then we also talk about how you can potentially get started investing in real estate without lifting a finger. Yeah, we talk about that. So be sure to stay put. This episode is definitely going to be game changing as we go through the rest of this year. Are you on track for your goals or not? If not, this episode will definitely help. So a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Be sure to go on to austinsmithrealestate.com slash podcast. Be sure to check out um, and sign up and register. And if you've gained some value um, by listening to the podcast, definitely log on to iTunes. Leave me a rating and a review. Let's continue to share this message. So without further ado, let's get into the show. What's going on, everybody, today on the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast? We have yet another awesome guest who's out of Shaw Town, and she's out there doing her thing. Uh, she's a current investor, current ager who helps investors, you know, purchase multifamily, single family, uh, duplexes, quads, you know, commercial properties, all that in between. Uh, and she's really doing it out in Chicago. She's also the founder of Flippin' in Hills, which is a community for women real estate investors. And they host conferences, they host property tours, which if you go onto her Instagram profile, you'll actually see, um, one, the footage and the data from the press property tours and the upcoming ones as well. Um, and they also do online summits. So they're really big on educating the community, especially women investors, on how to take action and take their business to the next level. And she not only aims to educate women on the avenues of investing, but also highlights women who are making the decision within the industry as well. So she's really linking like the movers and the shakers in the business. So it's a really good platform. And uh, she uses her influence to raise awareness about wealth building. And the best, I think one of the, uh, the best attributes is that she helps raise capital for individuals who may not normally be able to invest in some of the deals or some of the larger deals. And she helps bridge the gap between investors that are looking for money and obviously people with money that are looking to invest. And she prides herself on that. And she's just getting started. She's only been in the game a few years and uh, she's already taken off. So long story short, the accolades will speak for herself. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Rashana Scott. Rashana, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. What an introduction. I said, man, this guy did his homework. <laughs> well, you make it easy, you know, with the, um, you know, with the accolades, the successes, everything that you're doing. Um, and I'm thankful for the guests that do come on here because, you know, they – their successes and accomplishments uh, make it easy for me to communicate that um, to the audience. And, you know, I thank uh -huh. you for coming on the show. We'll jump right into this. Obviously, you weren't just born into real estate. Uh, you've been doing this for a few years, but, you know, obviously you're on your grind. How did you get started? So getting started in real estate, uh, as I explained on um, many of my other um, 
interviews that I do, I pretty much was introduced to the idea of financial freedom when I was in high school and there was a career day and there was a guy who worked for AT&T. He was a manager at AT&T and he said, even though I work for AT&T, I do not depend on AT&T to provide for me and my family. He also owned 400 vending machines across the city of Chicago. And I just thought that was the coolest thing because he explained... Mm. Yeah, yeah, and, and and this was like 10 plus years ago, but, um, you know, when vending machines were, I'm sure, more, more popular than what they are now, but he said he was sitting in, you know, doctor's office one day, and he was wanted a snack, and he was like, I noticed you guys don't have any vending machines, and I, and, you know, the conversation started from there, and then really took off into a business from there, and he explained the process of filling it up. Uh, how much money he makes when when it's empty, uh, the low maintenance that's on it. So he explained all that. And then, it, again, it just really introduced me to that idea, like, wow, okay, uh, I, you know, even if I do work a job, I, maybe I don't want to depend on someone else the rest of my life to provide for me and my family. So from then on, I knew that in order to be financially free, I needed um, – I need to be learn how to. I needed to become successful, but I needed to also learn how to be good with money and finances and things like that. So I really dug deep into learning about credit and credit repair and and budgeting and spent a lot of time attending um, workshops and going to seminars and conferences. And I attended as many free ones as I could because again, I'm working part time or you know, as sometimes I'm working full time and in school full time, you know, working through to get my undergrad and just trying to figure this thing out along the way. Uh, I did not go away to college. I stayed home because I knew that one way to this whole success or financial freedom thing. I, I, I knew that um, student loan debt was the fastest growing debt in, in the country at that time. And I didn't want any student loans. So I stayed home and paid my way through college because I knew, again, I just I just knew I wanted to be financially free. I wanted to be successful. So I needed to stay away from debt as much as I could, as well as that's why I really took the time to learn about credit because the only history that I have of credit is is that it's so is bad, is negative, and and you can go into debt. But then understanding this, oh well, there's a such thing. There's actually a such thing as good debt, and you can actually leverage debt to you know help you get to the next phase or what or what have you in life. And so someone gifted me the book Rich Dad Poor Dad um, when I was working at one of my part time well my first part time job read that book. Again, I knew I wanted to be successful, but I didn't know the way. And once I read that book, I said, real estate is going to be the way. Also, at that time, I was able to come across a mentor uh, who was a friend of mine. Uh, We went to high school together and her dad, uh, and I don't remember, I may have overheard him saying something about like the family business. I think that's what it was. I may have overheard him saying, and, and, and saying something about it. And saying, like, oh, I wish, you know, my daughter would get herself together so she can take on this family business. And I was like, well, what is it? And then when he said real real estate, you know, my my interest was already piqued about real estate. But I said, okay, tell me more. I want to learn more. And I was so serious about it. And he said, okay, if you're serious, you know, meet me at the library and we'll we'll talk. And so I remember, and I I don't know, I might have been 17 or, uh, yeah, maybe 17, 18, something like that. And we sat down, and he broke down um, ARV, OPM, being an investor, being a realtor, uh, being a loan officer, what all of those things and those and all of that looks like. And so that was a great experience for me. Um, I started my first business. I incorporated my first business when I was 19, and I built up a $20,000 business line of credit all under the – uh, guidance of this mentor. However, I also learned, like now in hindsight, that uh, having a mentor is, is great. You should, but you should definitely have many mentors because you know what one knows, the other doesn't, and vice versa. And also, a mentor can only really take you as far as they've gone or as far as they currently are. And so, even though uh, he he was able to share with me so so much great information. 
as far as like laying the foundation of real estate. Um, I, once I once I was ready for my next step, I was kind of like, okay, what's next? Right. And 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 really, you know, nothing happened. And so I found myself again from there searching, and just to speed it up a little bit. Um, then a, a friend of mine was a realtor. I said I'll jump into that. See, you know, see how I felt about that. Um, did that for a year again while working and in school. Um, then I went, I went and I found a, a program, invested a lot of money, thousands into real estate investing education. Did that for a couple of years. Um, then invested in my first deal where I, I was a private investor. I could not afford the entire deal at all. I couldn't even afford the minimum investment, but someone mm-hmm. allowed me the opportunity to invest. And from there, you know, fast forward to today, I had some business uh, partnerships that went good, some not so good. And uh, and the one that I am today is, is, is really great and got a lot of deals going on. And I get the opportunity to really do what I love. So. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> awesome, and it, and it's you know it's cool to see the journey. It's cool to see the progress you have. And now you're going to be detailing that journey and those experiences in a book that you have that's coming out, right? Do you want to just talk about that really quickly? I am. Yes, yes, yes. I am. So the book is so funny because I remember someone asking me last year, like the year before, like, when are you going to write a book? Because everybody's writing books. And I was like, (laughs) when I feel like it, you know, when the time is right. Like I was not in a rush to add author to my name. You know, I'm, I'm more of, um, you know, as a millennial, I, I, I feel it necessary to also be a creator, um, and to be innovative and, and so a part of my creating, it has to feel natural and it has to feel right. I'm not just doing something because everybody else is doing it. And so the book um, just came to me because, uh, ironically, I was interviewed, being interviewed on another podcast, actually, um, the Tamina Capital podcast with Charles Oglesby. And I was telling my story and I, I can't remember if he said it or if I said it and I said something, something, and it, it was about having the confidence, you know, to make those decisions, uh, business decisions that I didn't make back in the day, and then also having the right contracts in place. So when the episode came out, he, he named it Episode 100, Confidence and Contracts. And then a friend of mine reached out and was like, I need you, you need to, to, you know, go and buy that domain name and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? You know, I had a catchy tone to it, but I was just like, uh, okay, whatever. I'm not, you know, just buy it for what, just because. Um, and then that was probably like 930 that morning, maybe about three, three o'clock or so in the afternoon. It just hit me and it came to me as clear as day that that was going to be the name of the book and the book was going to be around my experiences. So, um, okay. And uh, when yeah. is that, when yeah, is that yeah, yeah. come out? Is that out already or? Oh, no, no. So, uh, the fall. So I'm, I'm looking at a fall release date. Um, so confidence and contracts again about having the confidence to go into certain business relationships or business ventures or just to do business in general, having the confidence to know and stand on, um, and not negotiate your worth. And as well as having the correct contracts in place to uh, oversee that deal, and new be uh, contracts from again business partnerships, relationships, or um, like wholesalers when working with wholesale deals or subject to you know just different aspects of investing that uh, that aren't your traditional purchase and sale agreement that you may need to have in place. I mean, I'm even. Uh, speaking with another realtor right now who is out of state but that has a lot of referral business here so instead of just a, re- a flat like referral fee that we do as most agents we're actually going to have a contract in place because it'll be a, a, a you know a lot of volume and right. again having that having those hard conversations up front you know because i think the thing is that when we're first starting out and, and whether you're young or whether you're just new, you know, we, we, we let both of those play against us because you can be 45 and you can say like, oh, well, but I'm new, right? So you right. don't have the confidence to, again, stand on your word and, and negotiate things. But I want, you know, the listeners to take this with them 
if anyone, if anyone is having a conversation with you, don't downplay the fact that they need you because they're having a conversation with you for a reason. Right. You know, and they see something in you that you can bring to the table. Um, you just got to see it in yourself. But yeah, so that's the book. Be sure to check that out, everyone that is listening. You said it comes out in the fall, so be definitely be on the lookout in the fall. And um, yes. I'll have a show to tell us. Uh, just let us know the uh, Instagram handle so at least people can uh, follow you as you know they track when that release date uh, occurs. Yes, I'm Rashana Scott everywhere. Add a, <clears throat> makes it nice and easy. It ju- uh, just your first and last name, right? Yes. Okay, that makes it. There's your IG handles, Facebook, all that other stuff. Also, mm-hmm. the um, uh, right before we just talk about um, you know, raising the capital for deals, finding deals. Um, it seems like flipping in heels is kind of your your uh, philanthropic. My baby. Baby, exactly. <laughs> Um, talk to us about that because it seems like you're you're building a platform where you're putting it out there. You're educating, you know, especially women investors. And let's let's actually uh, dive into that because I was going to dive into it later, but actually let's dive into it now. Um, NAR statistics, like we were talking earlier, NAR statistics, so the National Association of Realtors, um, they have the the you know yearly report that comes out and. I think the statistic is um, 57, it's either 57 or 53, whatever that number is. Outside of that, it's obviously more than half. More than half of the agents that are out there are a 53 or something year old white woman. So with that demographic obviously being the you know majority, no problem, um, what do you say to black women who are either about to get in the game or, you know, thinking about getting into the game of investing? Are there any kind of limiting beliefs that it's a male dominated, you know, industry? And, and does that hold does that hold some people back? What do you say to that? And then incorporate flipping and heels into that. Yeah. Well, OK, well. In regards to the male-dominated industry, I would say that's more so on the investing side, not so much on the realtor side, uh, because I do wear different hats as, or both hats as an investor and as a licensed realtor uh, in the state of Illinois. And in regards to the realtor side, you really just got to create your own space, create your own space, create your own lane, your community your your network, your following, um, your tribe, your your audience, they are out there um, and they are looking for people who speak their language. They're looking for people that they can relate to. Um, if you are going to go and get your license and you really want to do real estate, then let everybody and their mama know that you do real estate. Like there's people that – I meet who the real estate and I had no idea they had their license. It would probably make me sick to my stomach if I had a conversation with like a, a distant friend or a cousin or whomever. And they tell me that they just bought a house and I say, Hey, well, uh, why didn't you call me? And then they say, well, I didn't know you did real estate. Right. You'd be surprised at how many people are out there. They call them like secret agents, right? You'd be surprised at how many people are out there claiming that they want to do real estate and, and, and have a real estate business, but nobody knows you do real estate. So be bold about it. Put it out there. Um, and again, people are looking for you. They want to do business with you, especially if it's people that look like you and people who are in your community and, and also people who don't like look like you. When you can validate yourself as a, as a resource and just as somebody who really knows their stuff, people will come from every which way, you know? So I, I would say, you know, I wouldn't worry about, um, the color, the age, the demographic, any of that on, on, on the real, especially on the realtor side. Um, just, just do what you gotta do and, and show it. 
you know, like social media is a free platform. And that's how I get a lot of my clients and even deals through social media because I'm showing this is who I am and this is what I'm doing, period. You know, you go to my page, there's no question about it. And social media can be a great tool when using it for the right thing. Now, on the flip side of that, in regards to Flipping in Hills, yes, Flipping in Hills was created because real estate investing is a very male-dominated industry. It does have a masculine energy in it into it when you're talking about walking vacant properties or walking through distressed properties or doing rehab and construction um, or or raising a lot of money or working with a lot of deals. Like that, that's those are things that um, mostly males are in, in the conversation about and have been in the conversation about for years. And so Living in Hills was created because when I spent thousands of dollars in learning about how to invest in real estate when I was 22, 23, it was not with a woman. You know, it was not with a woman-owned company. It was with a, a male-led company where the majority of the instructors were all males. And so just reflecting and looking at, well, what woman can I look up to? What woman is out here really doing it at a level of investing that I aspire to be and not really finding her, you know, looking for her and not really finding her and then saying, okay, well, you know, that's opportunity to create her or become her or, or highlight her and find her if she is out there and bring her to the world for the rest of the woman, women who are like me to see like, Hey, you know, there, there's a, you know, people say it all the time, like, Oh, you know, like New York or like California is way too expensive to invest in real estate. Well, guess what? I found a woman who was flipping in real estate and she flipped over 30 houses in the Bay Area and I interviewed her um, on the Food and Hill Summit that I did to show that, for one, you know, the excuse is that, you know, it's too expensive, but here's somebody who's doing that. Right. Or the excuse is that it's a male-dominated industry, but here's a woman that's doing that. You know, or here's a here's an area where that can't be done, but let me show you that it is. So... Yeah, that's living in hills, and then and then the and then the content behind that is the community, is the page, is the um the podcast that'll also be coming out in the fall, where I'll be highlighting women uh, more consistently to you know share their stories around investing, uh, as well as I am filming a web series that does that does the same thing. It highlights women who are investing and that'll be coming out too. So working on a lot of projects and that's why I say it's my baby because it's 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 really a passion project. Everything that I'm doing, even the filming, I mean I gotta I have my intro and three episodes down. I have um so much invested into that out of my own pocket. Um but again because it's it's a passion project of mine. So <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. One, uh, one thing that I wanted to point out that you had mentioned was like, you know, creating your own lane and, and you know, kind yeah. of having the blinders on and not worrying about that. And, you know, I bring up, um, I had an individual, um, if he listens to the podcast, he'll know exactly who he is. But his market is uh, predominantly white and he has dreads. So him getting into the business, he was asking me like, you know, you know, out of curiosity, do you think that, you know, I should put my picture on my business card. And I understood what he was saying. And, you know, and to his credit, I remember when I first got in the business and, you know, where my original office when I first started, it was in a predominant, it was in a, um, it was in a diverse area. However, it was still uh, heavily populated by white people. And, you know, mm -hmm. no problem about that. But, you know, that had me, you know, thinking, OK, do I have to be a certain way in order to appeal to those type of clients? And, you know, it just didn't sit right with me. And the more that I started doing my own thing is the more that I, you know, started uh, attracting a lot more business and being a lot more happier in my business. So yep. I understood yep. what, you know, my friend was saying. But, um, you know, it, I also realized that, yes, it is a. Uh, um, a limiting belief in it and it is something that you know does inherit you know our community as far as a way of thinking and you know just to point that out there but you know long story short i was like hell no do your thing do what you gotta do and and you know send the morning's way but um you know i'm glad that you did point that uh -huh. out because that you know that is something that um you know just needs to be talked about and wanted to be discussed 
Um, okay. Yeah. Ab- Go ahead. Absolutely. I mean, I think in, in today, in today's age, day and age, um, we have to be very unapologetic about who we are, and we're 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 we live in the world where there is the um, the unthinkable that things are are happening. Right. And, and I'll use this as an example. I don't know if this is the best example. But for example, uh, like unsigned, um, like artists making their own way. Right. Mm-hmm. Or creating their own spaces. You have so many content creators who are just putting their their content out on social media and saying, you know, forget trying to get on, you know, TV. And then and then they make it right. So you have to aggressively and fearlessly go after whatever it is you're trying to do anyway and be your authentic self but you just got to go hard at it enough for people to see and for people to take you serious because when you're doing your thing like nobody can touch you nobody can mess with you nobody can say anything negative about you you know they can give you know constructive criticism and feedback but regardless you're working toward whatever it is you want to do. And again, it's that brand recognition and that brand awareness that you're creating. Even if you are doing it wrong, people still know you for doing that one thing. Um, right. And you've created your own lane. And now the people come to you. Like in regards to speaking to realtors, you know, a lot of young realtors or new realtors, when they're looking for a brokerage company to go to, want, the main question is, well, do you get leads or do they give you leads? But you want your brand to be at a point where the leads are coming to you. You know, it doesn't right. matter where you go as far as a brokerage. That right. the, the leads should be definitely secondary to everything else that you look for, you know, as far as the support um, from the admin or marketing side or whatever the case. Like, you should be generating your own business because you are your own business. I uh, it's it's I mean that's why I pride myself on you know building the business uh, organically, uh, you know just through network and spirit influence you know friends family you know building organically that way and then using you know money from that that's generated from that reinvesting it in the business on the marketing side to then you know kind of add gasoline on the fire but I did the cold call in the door and I I didn't like it and I the more that I built the brand and just built, uh, you know, just creating more value for the people around me, uh, the more my business, you know, picked up and continues to pick up. So I, I definitely feel you on that. Let's, um, let's get into, uh, you know, finding the money to invest, right? Because we were talking about, uh, your platform as far as slipping in hills and, you know, kind of letting it be known that, Hey, there are women that are doing this successfully there should be no mm-hmm. excuse. There's no excuse, right? Which is why we have these platforms like this. Because, like, at the end of the day, we can honestly go to sleep at night and be like, we put the information out there for you. It's up to you. So, but, yep. however, the two biggest excuses is I don't have the money and I can't find any deals. Um, we know the deals are out there because we see people that are doing it. However, the thing that you don't see kind of behind the scenes is how the money is raised and how the money, you know, is acted in the transaction and things like that. So how do you help people and your, you know, especially the newer investors, how do you help them find money to invest with? How do, like, or how do you help them raise capital to invest with? So I raise capital for my deals. Um, I do... In regards to teaching people, um, I speak at like conferences and, and seminars. I actually have a event coming up this this Sunday where I'll be teaching about private investing. But that's not my main. My main focus is is raising money for the deals that I have going on because I look at it as an opportunity to allow again to allow allow people the opportunity to get involved in investing where. One, they don't have the experience to do it on their on their own, okay, and they I got don't. You. They, they don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't have the capital to do it on their own. 
Um, because gotcha. so they don't, and, and right, let me take. Got you, got you, got you. So you actually yeah, yeah, no, individuals okay. that are you know say if they only had you know a couple of thousand dollars to work with, but obviously with you and you know the leads that you're pulling in, obviously five thousand dollars spread across X amount of people, you know, can get the deal done. So it gives them an opportunity to still participate in the game, just not on the level of you know the the actual investor uh-huh. or you know the actual operations of it. Exactly, exactly. Gotcha. And that's because that's that's exactly how I got started. Again, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, my very first deal, I was a private investor and someone allowed me the opportunity to invest in their deal. And I showed up to that deal almost every day because I was an investor. And now the person who I'm invested with, they owe me. So I'm asking questions. I want to know about the project. I want to know about this, that. Oh, OK, there's plumbing. Um, issue or there's a mold issue. Okay, it was a condo. So is that an association issue? You know, just learning so much about the project. But because I was invested, it allowed me the opportunity to show up. And on some of the other uh, podcast interviews that I've done, we've called we've we've coined that uh, mentor hacking because a lot of people are out here looking for a mentor or in search of a mentor when you don't really actually find a mentor. A mentor finds you mm. um and, and and it's a conversation where you are having you're having a conversation with someone and they see something in you enough to say that, hey, I'm going to invest in this person. Um by versa or, or on the other side to that is if you like literally before we got on this um this interview, I was just talking to someone who wants to invest in a deal. She has like twenty, thirty grand to invest, um, but she wants to learn how to invest and do it on her own. But she doesn't have the experience to do it on her own right now. So she's gonna invest with me, learn the ropes, learn the project and and then go and try to do a project on her own. And it's it works out so much easier that way. Then, then I think because again, that's the experience that I had as getting started. For one, and for two, it's almost like you're you're pretty much partnering with the professional, without right. having to bring the big money to the table. You're you're able to be involved in something so much bigger than what you can um, do on your own. And so, yeah, that I allow people the opportunity to get involved on my deals because again, that's how I get started. And it gives you, it gives you just a great feeling of, you know, you're able to invest in something and, um, in a deal, you know, be in and out in a couple months, you get your return back, you get your original investment back plus your interest, your return. And, you know, now you can do whatever you want to do with that, go on to the next deal or what have you. But the great thing about it is that you didn't have to, make the mistakes of trying to learn on your own and then lose lose money, which the majority of newbie investors do. Do do you have a, a, a minimum that, that you require or, you know, is I, it? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Ten grand is my minimum. And it's, it's set up, um, I, we use the term investor a lot, but it's pretty much, it's really not set up like a, a an investor agreement. It's a private loan agreement or like a lender. So essentially, um, my my investor is is a lender on that deal, and they get a flat percentage of a return, you know, on that project. Right. And right. the great thing about it is that your investment is tied to the asset. You know, it's protected by a hard asset, something that you can touch. And 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 if it burns down, we have insurance. You know. Right. 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 So. The, the, so. Uh, so right. yeah. Okay. So no. now. Are you also um, now? You obviously you're putting the deals together. You're finding the deals. And are you are you finding the deals yourself, or, or are you you know partnering with people and they're bringing the deal to you for you to fund? So deals come every which way um, at this point because again, I think, um, my brand, so where people know exactly who I am and exactly what I'm doing. So like a deal just came in the DM. Uh, with a hundred thousand dollars spread on it, uh, as far as the profit, and that came because the person is it, great numbers. It's a situation where it's a distressed situation. The seller needs to get out, and so they're ready to get out at a um, decent number to where there's a still a great profit in order to you know make the repairs and, and put the property back on the market. So that came via DM, but um, 
right now I'm not looking. I'm not actively looking because I have so many deals to take on right. and have a couple deals I'm looking for, so I'm not looking. But um, the, uh, we have a land bank here in Chicago called the Cook County Land Bank. That is a great resource, a phenomenal resource. You don't have to fight the MLS, you know, all your other buyers. Um, and I know some other places have land bank. Like I know Detroit has a land bank. And I think a few other places have um, land banks where you can actually purchase property from community organizations. So those uh, we went and found on our own. Um, and we, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we, um, that's myself and my business partner. Um, so we have two land bank deals that we're working on right now. And then another one we actually bought, um, that one came in the DM. And that one, I have an investor on that out of New York who I've never met before. And she was able to um, get 0% interest credit cards. And so that is the the exact example of using other people's money. So she's using credit, which is other people's money, at 0% interest to invest in a deal with me. I'm using other people's money, which is her credit, to you know, for her to invest in a deal with me. And then I'll pay her and 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 she's able to pay off her cars and, you know, she's able to pay off her cars and keep her, keep, keep her return. Right. And then she's paying down that line and she can go and use that again. Um, but yeah, so no, that deal came, um, on Instagram and then a couple other deals came on Instagram and then we're starting to do some Facebook ad marketing as well. Um, targeting specific zip codes for deals that we want to invest in and pretty much like a wholesaling approach or method, but not really doing like the direct mail campaigns because right. that is so saturated, so saturated. That and bandit signs and, you know, people throw junk mail away all the time. But people are constantly on their phones, constantly on social media. I mean, um, you know, Facebook has, what, one billion or two billion active, you know, users yeah. a day or something like that. So using those ads and, and that's been really working out great, too, I get just two deals under contract this week um just through facebook ads alone so but we're gonna really take a halt <laughs> at that because right now it, it it was at a point where i had more investors than i had deals so the investors were kind of just waiting to invest on a project with me and now it's like okay i got a lot of deals you know let me focus on getting these funded and, and the matching investors with the right deals depending on what they said you know, they can, they can do, um, matching them up, getting those deals closed and rolling. Awesome. Awesome. And yes, I mean, it's, uh, real estate is one of those businesses where you really understand the, uh, the power of teamwork to be able to, you know, especially take down these deals. Um, because you know, it's important that to realize that everybody that's coming into the game may not have all the resources that's needed in order to be successful and they use that as a reason not to even get started so exactly you know, you'd be surprised on what 10 grand here will do 20 grand from this person you know five grand from this person 30 grand from this and then now you have an opportunity especially especially in markets where they're more uh you know it's more expensive um you know you just need to raise you know more funds um and obviously have the proper structure in place and obviously you have to have the right investor as well uh which is why honestly which is you know me listening to you talk about how you know wording the agreement as more of a loan rather than investor because obviously people that are coming in lending their money you don't want too many chefs in the kitchen as well and it's more of a mm -hmm. you know sit back and wait for your return it'll be here in a couple of months here you go do your thing um yep the so as we you know kind of slowly start our you know descent here uh which you've given us uh some gold to begin with i want to talk about action because you gave us a lot of knowledge but obviously without implementing it uh it kind of goes in vain and want to talk about what can people do over the next, let's take the next quarter, or it's the middle of the year now. Um, so over the next few months, what if somebody's either new or they've started to do a little, you know, a couple of deals here and there, but they're looking to take their business to the next level. What would you say uh, is like the one thing that someone should focus on, you know, over the course of the next few months to really set themselves up for success, at least in this business? 
Um, as a realtor or as an investor? Um, I'll say I'll say an investor. Okay, so definitely revisiting your goals and seeing are you on track, you know, where where you are in, in relation to your goals and how that has changed or if that's changing. Um, also taking a look at the market and seeing what's going on with the market and if you should make any adjustment, adjustments. Um, considering that, I'll give you an example. I have three single-family homes that uh, we're flipping right now, but the way the market is, everybody and their mother wants to house hack. Everybody wants a building. They want to purchase a, a duplex or a tri or a quad, uh, live in one unit, rent the other ones out, allow your tenant to pay for your mortgage. That's, that, that's really blowing up really across the country. Right. Um, but, of course, I see it in Chicago. Well, the next three deals that I'll be doing will be all two flats. So I have duplexes all under contract to go in and flip those because, like, I currently have buyers for those deals right now. So those will be sold before they're done because the demand is there in right. regards to the market. You know, as far as my single families, yeah, they'll be beautiful rehabs, but, you know, I'm I'm just putting them on the market and expecting the market to do its thing. So definitely, um, you know, taking a look at that as well as stepping up your marketing. You know, if you have some success already and you want to take things to the next level, how do you raise your visibility and your awareness? Does that mean um, purchasing ads, doing online ads, doing more banded signs or uh, direct mail marketing? Or does that mean just being more active on your social media um, and, you know, things of that nature? Or going to more networking events, you know, look at that as a marketing tool as well because you're getting out and you're meeting people and you're telling people, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do. Um, I the, Actually, the, the three buildings that are under contract right now, that came from me meeting someone years ago face to face and, you know, called me up. You know, I hadn't talked to this person maybe a year or two and they were like, Hey, I got some deals. And so, so, so maybe getting out and networking, um, you know, if, if that's something that you don't do, I would make that, I would, I would try to make that, um, a priority anyway, you know, whether it's a networking event once a week or a couple of times a month, uh, getting out there to knowing the who's who in real estate and then also making sure they know you. Because, again, these deals, these great deals that are coming along, you want to be one of the first, you know, to be considered. So I would say that to rate of raising that awareness of who you are, what you're doing, you know, getting the word out. Do you, uh, the, I, I want to get your opinion on a popular notion uh, amongst us investors and it's like find the deal and then the money will come or you know get your money right and then go shopping like don't window shop what we like what what's your thoughts on that so somebody you know obviously the 20 percent you know the revenue generating activities is doing whatever they can to ramp up their marketing to let people know hey if you know anybody that's looking to sell let me know cool um do you think that people should focus on filing the deal first or should they focus on understanding, okay, based off of what I'm looking to do, I, I need this, you know, I need whatever amount of dollars ready to, to invest with. What would you say? I think they should focus on finding the deal first because, yeah, I do believe in that. If it's a great enough deal, then the um, the money will come. And... You know, I hate to sound cliche, or you can do it simultaneously. Like, you may have a deal in the works, and you may um, be having a conversation with someone, but maybe you haven't completely locked it down yet. As soon as I, I, I'm, I'm feeling that that's going to be close to, you know, a contract going on it, I'm getting on the phone, having conversations with people. But me, actually, I'm having conversations before. I have, because it's out there that, hey, this is what I am and this is what I'm doing. So investors are coming to me saying, I want to invest with you. So you eventually want to get, um, you eventually want to get there. And, and I do that by one marketing strategy is by me saying, hey, this is a deal that I have that I'm working on with an investor and this investor is getting an extra return. And people see that and they say, hey, well, I want to invest with you. But 
again, as I mentioned earlier, you know, having more investors than I have deals, now those investors are just sitting and waiting versus when you have a great deal. That's where it also comes into play of what I was saying earlier about you having the confidence to know that you're bringing something to the table. So be creative enough to, if you bring the deal and you don't have the money, maybe you partner with another investor who does. Maybe it's not just the the fact of, um, I get a deal, so I, I got to go and find the money. Or I got to go find a private investor, and I got to run this whole thing by myself. Maybe if I find a great deal, and I go and partner with the contractor, or I go partner with somebody who's already flipping, or I go partner with somebody who already has the infrastructure in place, and now we can make something happen because, again, it's that great of a deal. So you just have to be creative in um, finding your different resources, as well as knowing that if you are looking to raise private capital, cash is not the only way that people can invest. I mentioned um, credit card being a, a way that people can invest. Um, also, people who have retirement accounts, so like a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA, a 401k, they can actually roll that into a self-directed IRA and invest in a real estate deal with you tax-free or tax-deferred. So having those conversations with people and educating them on these are so many different ways that you can invest in real estate and this is what I currently have, you know, what can you do? Or do you know somebody who who, who would be interested in this? But once you have a deal, um, I, I, I do believe that, that, that it'll come, you know, that, that the money or that the right partnerships will come. You know, especially all, all it takes is getting in, in in some of these Facebook groups online. You know, even if, again, maybe you don't have that community in your area yet, we'll post it online, you know, put it out right. there. And, and and again, the the money will come. Uh, agreed. And I, you know, I, I tend to tell, you know, people that it's just the... As long as you find the deal, I mean, you, you don't, you know, and I tell you, you don't have to have money, no problem at all. But if you're not going to use your own money, which you don't have to do, no problem at all, you at least have to know where your money's coming from. Like, don't be caught in a situation where, you know, you're kind of scrambling, overthinking, now you have analysis paralysis, like everything's kind of hectic. Like, at least, like, if you're not going to use your own money, no problem, but at least have, you know, a couple of options to go to so that way as you spend all of your time focusing on finding the deal first, uh, once you do find the deal, at least you have some options and some people to call in regards to funding. So, um, okay, all good. Last question before we hit into the core four. Um, you can make it real simple, but what's what's next for you? You've ca- probably already touched about it, you know, with the the book that's coming out, the web series. But what's you know what what's next, or is that next? Well, obviously, it yeah, is next because you said it's next already. But <laughs> you get what I'm saying. <laughs> that's next. Um, working, working, working. That's that's what I get. That's what I'm doing. I'm working. So. Um, more deals, more investors, more conversations with people around wealth building and, um, y- you know, just bridging the gap of what's going on and, and or what has taken place in, in our community, uh, raising awareness about about what's going on out here. Like the new flex is, is wealth building, you know, real talk. Right. Um, it, it's, it's no longer... Um, you know, the liabilities and the things that really don't matter uh, as much. And so that's why house hacking has become so popular because, again, this conversation around uh, wealth building, I mean, I truly believe that there's definitely like a black renaissance. There's a movement that's taking place right now, and our community and our culture is, is going so hard, and I'm just blessed to be a part of it and to be able to witness it. Uh, the majority of my clients are millennials and, you know, young first-time home buyers who believe in this idea of generational wealth, and, and, and they can see it. It's attainable to them, and so just to continue driving that uh, but yes, you know, the book, the podcast, all of that that's coming out, but really to, again, to continue working and to continue uh, spreading, spreading the message. Like I have a a bus tour that is coming up this weekend and it's from, it really came from me traveling around the country and speaking at different engagements about uh, real estate and about investing and about the Chicago market. So, so many people were 
kept saying, I want to invest in Chicago and I want to come to Chicago because the market is much better than where I am, whether it's in New York or a Jersey or Philly or Cal- or California. And I said, okay, well, you know, all of y'all going to come here on the same weekend because that's, that's a lot for me to, you know, keep taking people out when they come here. So that's why I did a bus tour and I got investors flying in from New York, Louisiana, Texas, um, California, awesome. from all over to put boots on the ground and really see what's going on um, in regards to this generational wealth building movement that's really going on. Um, you know, I really take it serious about this work that I'm being called to do. And um, so, so yeah, so more events like that uh, because, again, the news, the media – you know, pay, paint Chicago as this this horrible place, this very dangerous place. But every single time somebody comes here and, and they've been here for the first time, they're like, "This city is is beautiful." It's a sorry for the New York people, but I, I heard it's a cleaner New York. Or is New York done right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's, so, it's oh man, we won't even get. That's a whole another episode. Yeah, we won't even get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But no, but that's what's next. Yeah, but that's what's next to, to continue doing the work. So everything that you're doing now, just on the 10x level, all good, all good. Um, all right, time for the four core, or the four core, the core four as we start our descent. Um, four questions that I ask each and every guest on the Austin Smith Real Estate Podcast. Uh, we'll rapid fire back and forth. Question number one: What is your favorite aspect about real estate? Freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Um, awesome. It excites me. Yeah. It always, awesome. It's always excited me. Yeah, freedom. Question number two. Favorite business or personal development book and no Richard Dad Poor Dad? <laughs> um, so, so just two really quick. Retire Young, Retire Rich um, is my favorite real estate book, and that is actually by Kiyosaki. Um, but a lot of people don't know about that one. Cause everybody knows I, the I other don't one. know about but that one either. So I'm yeah, about you, to, uh, yeah, that's that. Pull, you sleeping on it? It's Amazon all about leveraging. Yeah, it's all about leveraging um, smaller multi units to get to the bigger multi million dollar deals. Um, so so retire young, retire rich, and the one thing by Gary Keller. I think that's a great personal development book. Um, if you want to change anything in your life, it's about you really getting laser focus. Uh, yeah, the um, Gary Keller's one thing is uh, definitely an awesome book. Um, just when it comes down to just focus, time management, uh, prioritizing, you know, things like that. Uh-huh. And, uh, awesome book. Cool. Question number three: When you're not out slinging deals, uh, helping people invest, creating new investors, teaching, educating, empowering. When you're not doing that, what are the fun things that you like to do in your spare time? And I'm not even saying that none of those things are fun, because it definitely is. I'm a foodie, so, and and a fat girl at heart. So I love to eat good <laughs> food. There we go. <laughs> I'm like that. Yeah, I'm going out to eat. I'm having a cocktail. I'm hanging out, preferably on the rooftop, enjoying the breeze. You know, in Chicago, we only get that for a good, like, three, four months, so right, we're soaking right. it up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Awesome. And question number four, last but not least, Rashana, where can people find you at? So I'm Rashana Scott everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I also have a Flippin' and Heels Instagram page as well as a Facebook group. Awesome. Awesome. Rashana, thank you so much for taking the time to come out and talk to us today, provide the insight, provide the experience. Um, the gems that are dropped, people can actually use in their business. Uh, it's not, uh, it's simple, just not easy. And and I think people mix up the two. And, yeah. you know, the, the opportunities are out there. You just have to find out how to put it all together. Rashawn is obviously offering it a, a platform and a profile that, teaches that so you you know you just have to ask the right question and once you have the answer just go do it don't second guess it don't question it just go act because like you know like you talked about especially when a mentor with a mentor uh the mentor shows up when you're ready and it's a lot easier to get um 
the your answers and like your questions to your answers um when you are able to provide value and we, when you're able to come to the point yeah. with something rather than come in empty handed. So yeah. do, you know, do what you got to do, ask questions, reach out. There's always enough people to get, you know, to, to mentor and to provide value as long as you're doing your end of the bargain as well. Rashana, thank you again for coming on the show. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Enjoy. Enjoy.